this is Indy, and today we're gonna be a bit Finnish in my summer car. To my summer car, ladies and gentlemen, a early access game that released actually a couple of years back now, I think maybe about a year ago, uh, being developed by MS Tech Games. It's a very small group of Finnish developers. In fact, I think the uh, game is primarily being coded and developed by two individuals uh, with the help of some friends and some other folks for uh, things like voices, which don't happen that often in this game, the dialogue, the music, so on and so forth. So what what is My Simmer Car? Well, it's technically an open world survival game set in Finland, but it's got some interesting elements. Number one, it's obviously not trying to be that pretty. It instead focuses on some, you could say some relatively deep simulation aspects when it comes to how you build your car. Uh, as well as taking care of your character in terms of actual survival elements like stress, fatigue, thirst, all of which you can see in the top left hand corner there. It's a game that I've played a few hours of. Uh, it's been in my library I think pretty much since it launched in early access and I played it for like 10 minutes and didn't really have time for it and decided now that I was doing this series that this was the perfect time to get back into my summer car. Now there's actually quite a few things we can do. We can actually go out and try and make some money. We could drive into the town using our uncle's van uh, to try and make some money. We could chop firewood to make some money. But honestly, my favorite thing to do when I start up this game on a fresh uh, character is to really just try and get our car built up a little bit because I think the building aspect of this game is actually really fantastic. And for those of you who don't know, Finland is well known for their love for rally. In fact, at a very young age, uh, it's common for 12, 13, 14-year-old people to be already uh, owning their own racing car and competing in Finnish rallies, sort of folk rallies where all the cars are kind of capped and at any point in time, one individual could come over and make an offer on your car and you can't refuse. The idea being that everyone uh, kind of is constantly working on a new car. No one can ever get their car to a point where it's like the best of the best. It's all just about having sort of a slightly rubbish car hucking it around some Finnish roads and, and having a good time. And I love that. I always grew up uh, around motorsport uh, as a child, uh, learning to drive at a very young age, sitting on my dad's lap and then uh, onto motorcycles. So I always loved the idea of, of being able to live in a place like that and uh, was always, you know, I always wished I could. Like, oh, it'd be great to just be able to go out and have some, you know, some fun folk rallying without all the insane rules and restrictions and regulations that are required to actually get into racing. But let's go ahead and put this case of beer in the fridge because, uh, as you can see, we've got a note from our parents here. Don't be lazy. Fix your dad's old car. Uncle's blue van can be loaned. Don't drink alcohol. We will be back when we get bored. Yours, mom and dad. Uh, so we don't have too much food. That is actually something that becomes a concern after, like, the first couple days. We also do have to sleep. But like I said, how about we instead stumble our way into the garage? Because this game has a relatively deep simulation for this sort of thing. I will say first and foremost, if you're expecting any like really insane, exciting stuff here, it's probably not going to happen. Maybe we'll take the van into town, but it's actually a relatively long drive. One would say that there are some aspects of this game that are dull and very drawn out. That is definitely the survival simulation side of it. But I, for one, actually like uh, how sort of rewarding it all feels. Uh, especially putting together the components of your vehicle. So the first thing I'm actually going to do with our 3,000 uh, whatever money that we have here is I'm going to go into the catalog where you can see we can buy all these parts for our car, obscene dashboards and leopard print seat covers, a lot of racing stuff as well, even stereo systems. we got gauges, tachometers, headers, exhaust, turbo kits, uh, you name it. It's in here, carburetors, nitrous oxide systems. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to order myself a ratchet set because this is going to make uh, putting together the car a lot quicker. However, the funny thing about the ratchet set is we actually have to go mail a postcard because it's uh, 1995, guys. There's definitely no, no, uh, there's no, there's no mail service in in 
in Finland. Or there's no email. I imagine there's no, like, you know, buying on the internet. Actually, I remember even as a kid in, like, the late 90s to 2000s, uh, even when the internet was a thing, still looking at uh, catalogs and such. We need to, like, I think Bloom is on, and it's, like, way bright. Uh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Um, you know, actually looking in catalogs at car parts and things like that, motorcycle parts, just, just as a kid, so... Yeah, you can see why that's relevant. All right, where should we start? We could start putting the engine together, which is a bit of a uh, a bit of a complex thing. You can see all the components here for the engine just kind of scattered all around, all over the damn place. Engine parts everywhere. We need to find the block. That's obviously the best place to start. So let's get the block up on the workbench here. We're actually going to want to rotate the block because the first thing we're going to want to put in is the camshaft. So I happen to know a little bit about cars. I've never, like, really built a car from scratch. I'm not, like, some diehard... Uh, Grease monkey, gearhead, but I did grow up around cars primarily because it was a necessity to have to work on my own cars. It still is. And also because I was constantly helping my parents keep their cars running uh, while my dad was at work. So that was just one of the things that I ended up getting into as a very young person was mechanics, partly because of uh, the relationship that my family had with motorcycles. That's probably the biggest part of it, if we're honest. Where's the camshaft? There we go. Should we put that in as well? You just gotta line it up. It's basically all about just eyeing things up so you get the check mark. You start to put things together. You also then have to actually tighten things. So that's where the tool system in this game is gonna come into play. So I'm gonna slightly rotate this, open up our spanner set, and then we're actually gonna swap over uh, to our toolkit here in a second. Let me just put this down. There we go, F. So number two, we'll switch to the ability to actually select tools. And we need to find the right wrench here to actually you know what we don't actually need that yet what we need is our bearings there we go our main bearing just gonna go on the front there we've got our second and first bearing so everything's actually numbered which is nice because you will actually start to learn and sort of remember where things go when you do this so the first time you build an engine in this game especially if you're someone who has like no concept of uh of automotive at all it would probably take you a really long time in fact you might have to look some things up but if you have a basic understanding for how an engine works and the parts that exist within an engine but you've never even worked on in real life a lot of this stuff will probably come relatively natural uh you, you'll be able to at least figure it out and uh the hardest thing is remembering what spanner size you need for all these things there we go now we're just going to use our scroll wheel now if we had the ratchet it would go a bit quicker but we're going to go ahead and screw these in you can tell what kind of a, a let's play this is going to be today, guys, for this is indie. So uh, let me throw it in the background. <laughs> We're going to be here for a bit. I'm hoping we'll get at least at least some of the engine done. We'll probably put the uh, subframe on the car and get the wheels on. That's uh, that's always fun to work on the jack and stuff. And then, like I said, we'll probably take that letter into town when it's all said and done. We'll make that sort of the end of this whole, this whole rigmarole in my summer car. I love that this game is a thing, though. You know, I love that there's this sort of... Uh, there seems to be, like, this newfound interest in in this sort of thing, which I actually really appreciate. Like, you know, uh, the mechanic simulator, that's a big thing that also is going down. Let's put the camshaft gear on. So the camshaft we already put in there, which you guys may have saw. So we want to put the camshaft gear on the end there. We'll have to tighten that in as well. I think it was, like, an 8. Maybe it's an 11. I don't actually remember. It goes a lot faster once you remember there. It goes a 10. And we can put some other parts on the engine there as well. But how about we go ahead and finish up the rest of the camshaft components here. So we can put the pistons in now. Because those are actually going to go ahead and attach to our uh, to our crankshaft. Sorry, not our camshaft as I'm calling it. So let's grab piston one. You can rotate the parts. But usually you can get the parts to actually go into the engine even if they're not rotated. It's just a matter of actually finding sort of the interaction points. There's a lot of crouching in this game as well. The game doesn't let you just like pick stuff up from across the uh, world, so you're always crouching and leaning over and finding new finicky ways to tighten the bolts you need to tighten. <laughs> it's it's all a bit hilarious. Let's put our head gasket on there, and we could technically go ahead and put our uh, our cover on there. Oh wait, no, we need to put the rockers on. I'm sorry. So we need our cylinder head first. That's going to go on. That's going to have to get cranked down. But we can go ahead and throw the rocker shaft on there and then tighten those all down individually. So let's go switch back into this mode. I think we need something smaller or larger for these. I could be wrong. Let's go with a 12. And just check these nuts. Check these bolts, I should say. Sorry. I will say that there's, like, certain things in the game. It is early access, but there are certain things in the game that I wish they would have just done, like, you know, maybe, I don't know, like, tell us what size we need when we when we pan over this 
I get like it's this it's this deep simulation, right? <laughs> or or we just drink beer to deal with our thirst and our stress and we swear a bunch. By the way, which uh, apparently swearing like a Finnish person means saying the word pussy a lot, which is interesting. It's 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 a game that reminds me very much of 70s vulgar comedies, you know? Um I mean, pick anything from the 70s or even the early 80s, I guess you could say. And I don't know, there's just there's so much of this game. <laughs> When I when I think about those those old comedies, and that's kind of why I like it, you know. It's also it feels like it's got a bit of Cannonball Run in it, you know, like old Cannonball Run, Burt Reynolds, Sammy Davis Jr., all that good stuff. Oh man, I love that. I love those old sort of uh, comedies, seventies and eighties comedies, Blazing Saddles, you know, just all all that stuff was so good, man. And it did. It just had a certain a level of vulgarity to it that I don't think would fly sometimes in the modern era, uh, for better or for worse, I guess. But let's go ahead and finish this off. Scroll that in there. We can also go, uh, we'll go look at the car in a second. We can actually paint the panels and stuff on the car so we can at least make the car look nice and new, which it would make sense to paint all of the car uh, while all the parts were off, rather than trying to paint them when they're on. In real life, obviously that's how you would do it. It would be a much more complicated process. But in this game, we can obviously just paint them whenever the hell we want in reality. So let's go ahead and grab our radiator, actually. And uh, we'll actually just kind of show you how guys that, how that gets installed in the car, since that's actually really easy. The radiator doesn't have to be attached to anything else to install. One of the important things to note here is that when you do attach parts, if the previous part, if you attach a part to a part, for example, and you don't actually tighten the screws down, it will just fall off. So... That's something to keep in mind. Uh, oh, you know, hold on. We need our we need our socket set here. Then we can climb into the bay of the car. And uh, oh, phone's ringing. Phone's ringing. Hold on a second. Put the spanner set down. Let's go into the phone. Could be a job. Could be some money to be made. <laughs> okay. So if there's any of you guys out there who watch my videos who are actually finished. How accurate is any of this stuff? Like the the I know the car stuff is probably 100% on. I know Finnish people are uh, also known to drink quite a bit as well. Um, <laughs> like is, this, is the language just like mockery? And do Finnish people really swear like that? Like I gotta know, man. I, I love it because I know it's made by a couple Finnish people, um, and I see people in the reviews for this game always laughing about it. But man, it kills me. All right, let's get in here. Oh man, guys, I just thought of something. We're totally having a, a Dominic Toretto moment right here. Yeah, that's right. You uh you break her heart, I'll break your neck. I like the tuna here. Bullshit asshole, no one likes a tuna here. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's grab our spanner set. Switch to two and see what we need. Oh, that's actually the right size. Cool, there we go. Fortunately this looks like it's only held on by two screws. So that'll be the radiator in there. Honestly, we'll probably have to take the radiator out, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, how this this sort of worked in the car. It's basically the same principle, right? You, you attach the parts by knowing where they go, and then you go ahead and find the right spanner, the right wrench for those of us over here in the U.S., and you, uh, you screw it on down, and then boom, there we go. Now, with the car, uh, obviously the most important thing would be able to get the wheels and, like, the chassis on, and then you can build up from there. At least that's the way I would do it, because eventually we're going to want to try and roll the car in here to the pit so we can go ahead and put like the exhaust and stuff like that on so that's where we'd start tangling with all these components we can actually go ahead and throw the subframe on there right now in fact might as well do that while we're here so let's go ahead and rotate this bad boy and we're just gonna clink it on there and then there you can see the subframes there we'd go ahead and thread that in which i think the subframe is a 10 I actually think i remember this one so let's find the 10 ratchet there 10 spanner there we go We'll tighten down the subframe before we forget about it and go to attach the swing arms or anything like that and lose lose a bunch of our car, which would be bad. Thread those in. Two more to go. This is the game, though, guys. This is seriously it. Like, they do, like, the full-on simulation. A part of me wishes some things they'd be a little bit less uh, simulation-based on, like how far you have to drive to get into town. It's like a freaking 10-minute drive, I feel like. Uh, how, how long you have to chop wood to fill up a whole truck of wood if you do that? <laughs> it's just some of the stuff is like taken to the limit man i know people like that but for me i'm the type of person who wants to like appreciate the design elements of this game the stuff that i think is just fun and interesting and goofy without like having to deal with uh the really heavy just grindy simulation stuff but let's say we go ahead and just paint up the car while we're here basically just hold down the spray can and then all of a sudden the parts will be nice and uh, fresh 
As long as you're looking at the right spot when you do it. Uh, is it not working this time? Or am I not close enough? Huh, I don't know. Let's see. I think we can do the back of the car and it'll work. So that's kind of strange. Oh, there we go. You have to be looking at the component. If it says says what you're about to spray, then you're good. So that actually does the whole car body. And we can do the same thing with the, uh, the fenders. As long as we're looking where it says fender left, we'll actually go ahead and spray that up. And we'll be good to go. And then fender right. And we could do the same with the rest of this stuff. So we might as well we'll hit up the door wall here. I'd probably do the hood black, like a matte black. That looked pretty cool, right? We can even do the trunk like that. Get some red and black mixes going. You can see though, like all the details, right? We got like the boot lid, the individual parts of the dashboard, and the, the black panel, the subwoofer panel, you know, bits and pieces of the exhaust, the fuel tank. We've got there's a fuel pump. Like every component basically that would exist in a real car is actually here. Hubcaps, brake master cylinder, brake lines. Clutch lines, uh, there's the starter, master cylinder again, there's the headers, we got our fuel pump, carburetor, water pump, water pump pulley, alternator. Like in a carburetted car from this era, th these are all the parts, man. Like, yeah, you're not going to learn about like timing and the order for the piston, like all that stuff, the more detailed stuff. But so much of the, f of, like, what is how a car goes together is here. And really, when I was learning mechanics as a kid and working on cars with my dad and stuff, it was just a matter of like learning what the parts were, where they went, how they went there, and why they went there. And once you understood that, the rest was just academics. Like, okay, well, this is you know how you're supposed to do this, and this is how timing works. And it was just learning the rest of the puzzle. It was it was learning why the puzzle went where it went, and how the puzzle pieces were going to function together. Uh, after you had then learned just what the puzzle pieces were and how to make them snap together. It's very simple, actually. Mechanics are one of those things that I think overwhelm a lot of people because there are a lot of details and intricacies when it comes down to the fine elements of it. Uh, but in terms of being able to do most basic repairs on an automobile, like at home, uh, you know, like just installing a new alternator or a blower uh, motor for your heater or something like that, stuff's actually relatively easy. It is. It's, it's genuinely uh, staggering how easy it is. I mean, that's how I've saved so much money over the years working on my own cars. No doubt it's hard work and you got to get the right tools, but uh, you'd be shocked at how much money you can save. If you're interested in that sort of thing, of course, if you can just afford it, it's a hell of a lot easier to just take the car to the shop than to crawl out in the middle of winter on the side of the road and fix your exhaust. <laughs> so, all right, how about we take a break from working on the car here, and let's actually go ahead and head into town. I do want to talk actually quite a bit more about these types of games. We got the letter in there, right? Because I think games like this are really quite interesting, but I feel like they're still in a... They're still kind of in a transitioning phase, right? Like, I feel like these aren't going to go away anytime soon. There's a lot of people making these sort of simulation type games, some serious, some more uh, goofy and out there like this. And I actually really like the idea of games like this. I think we know that regular simulations can be successful and they do have an audience, especially with like the farm simulator games really taking off as of late. But the idea of a game that simulates a specific concept or a point in time with this being a finished summer of 1995 and what a typical young person might do. Well, get a couple of odd jobs out in the, in the countryside, work on the rally car, take it to a rally, try and win a rally, uh, you know, be obsessed with rally, pe rally people, um, you know, watching Mick Hacken in an F1, whatever it might have been, right? That's cool. I wish we had more games like that, but I wish they were all a little bit more uh, respectful of the player's time, I guess is the way we can do it. So let's repeat, release the handbrake here, the parking brake you want to call it. In this case, it looks like more of a parking brake. It's a bit finicky. There we go. All right, now we're going to go ahead and shift up because you do have to use a manual transmission in this game. And let's take off. So we're going to go to the right. I believe town is that way. Ooh, I didn't shut that door all the way. Hold on. Let's do what I would do in real life, especially if I was in the countryside. Just get out of the seat and just... All right, there we go. Enter driving mode. So you don't actually like get into cars like GTA style or any vehicle for that matter in this game. You kind of just crawl into the seat like you would in real life and then... Hop on in, pop the gear up. You can see there we got the sewage truck. Ooh, let's not flip the uncle's van day one on the roads. Uh, there's also the f the tractor over there with the wood that we can chop and we can load up the trailer and then come down this road. I'm actually going to be careful here because uh, it lets you get a bit wild with the van. It's a bit fishtail-y. It's kind of the back end goods a bit loose on this thing. And you could really slide off the road. They make driving fun. And I would say slightly exaggerated, and I, I, uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> it makes the drive uh, a bit more interesting, and I guess that's what they were going for. 
But back to what I was saying, I actually really like the idea of that. In fact, there was a point in time when we look back to sort of, you know, classic games, retro gaming, if you will, where that's what they would do. They were trying to come up with ideas for games, so it was like, well, let's make a game called Paperboy, where you're a paperboy, right? These very basic simulation concepts that were then presented in a very arcadey manner because, well, that's the technology they had. Now we have that same idea coming back, but things are being far more fleshed out. Like, can you imagine a modern Paperboy game? Don't even worry about making it arcadey, try and make it realistic and have you dealing with dogs and going out and trying to collect, um, you know, payment from people on the on your on your weekends. And remember, that's what I remember from being a paper boy, riding my bicycle a uh, couple neighborhoods over, delivering the papers with my little wagon behind my bicycle. Not a little wagon, it's a big wagon. Uh, railroad crossing? We're just going to go. The finish way, right? <laughs> a little bit of a scandy, scandy flick around this corner up here, perhaps. And, uh... You know, and, and just, like, exaggerate it and make it goofy and, you know, exaggerate the, uh... Okay. So, I went to Lape before, and I think that's where the car shop is. There's there's a map in this game at your house, but it doesn't really make any sense. I could probably have Googled this stuff, and that's honestly how I would recommend playing this game if I were you, is to just Google these things and sort of figure it out. But, uh... If not, you're just going to have to learn the hard way, which is to just follow the really, really tight, very, very good rallying road, which is why the Finnish roads are known <laughs> for, for their uh, for their jumps and their, their uh, difficulty when it comes to rally. So, yeah, I would like the idea of that, right? You know, like exaggerating the basic concept. I mean, that's exactly what this game does at the end of the day, right? It, it takes some of the things that make the Finnish lifestyle, the Finnish lifestyle, if you will, and then it, it exaggerates them. Or perhaps it doesn't. I don't know. Let me know out there. Uh, you, uh, you find folks of Finland. But either way, you, know, you get what I'm saying, right? And I just think that would make for some spectacular uh, simulation-style games. And we are, again, we are seeing more and more of those things. But I would like all of them to either offer alternative modes or just respect the player's time a bit more. Like, I get it's a simulation, but... I'm going to be honest, I'm not, like, a massive fan of having to drive 40 minutes to uh, go to the shops and stuff like that. Because with a lot of these games, I really like the core gameplay concept. I like the loop. I especially like the, the idea of, you know, building your own your own car. As someone who's sort of has a lifelong dream of building my own car of some sort, whether it's a tuner build or a muscle build or, or like, a, you know, a rally-inspired off-road build, whatever. Like, I love that. <laughs> so cool, man. And I actually like the idea of throwing in, like, oh, you got to go to work and sell some stuff and do the more mundane things in between. I don't know why I actually find that fun, but it's when they make those things require the same time commitment almost as, as they would in real life without the uh, exertion of stamina and physical strength that I'm like, eh, eh, you know, maybe tone it back just a little bit, guys, just a little bit there. And uh, I think I'd really, really be into this. This is actually a really dope road. This would be a sweet road to blast down. The vans actually handle them pretty well, considering I'm using mouse and keyboard here. I believe you can hook up a steering wheel if you have one. I haven't actually tried the controller for the car driving. I know that it doesn't work for uh, player movement, but I think the controller could be programmed much like a steering wheel. So you could use a controller, which would probably make this a little bit easier. Although mouse and keyboard does handle relatively well here. In terms of where the hell we are, I'm pretty sure that this location does actually loop around at some point, because I know we cross, we can cross the railroad multiple times, but we'll have to see where this takes us. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. It's a pretty big environment with not a lot going on, which is, uh, as many people would probably point out, especially for 1995, completely accurate for Finland, in the country, the Finnish countryside, I guess you could say. Oh no, guys. Oh no. Oh no. We almost binned Uncle's van. We did bin Uncle Van, and we died, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my summer car. Young male dead in a traffic accident. Pub Napo, I can't even read what half of that stuff says, but, uh... <laughs> so, this game has uh, two ways you can play, by the way. One is permadeath, and one is not permadeath, and I chose not permadeath. But uh, let's say we just click continue real quick and see where we left off. I think our last save was, you save by actually leaving the game by like taking a piss or uh, sitting in a chair, I think. 
So I think we're actually just going to be starting pretty much from where we were back at the house, right? Is the van gone? I wonder how this actually works. It's probably best that you just play the game as permadeath and see how far you can get, because I'm pretty sure the van is wrecked now. Yep, that's it. We got a mini bike to get around, but the letter was in the van. So we'd have to go back and pick up the letter from the car wreckage if it was there. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? After my terrible death and my uh, reincarnation, I think it's best that we just get back to working on the car. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the jack. I'm going to get the front end up there. We're going to try and get the wheels on this thing. And uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today for checking out my summer car. The game is like, uh, I think, 13 or $14 on Steam right now. Again, maybe made by a very small development team. It's still in early access. They're still adding things to the game. Still expanding it. And in case you want a quick run through of what you can actually do, you can actually race in this game. There is a rally. That's kind of the point is to get this car up and running. Actually get involved in a, in a rally. It's just, I don't know. If you're looking for something you can just kind of zen out on, zone out on, and just have fun. And if you like this sort of fantasy, uh, and if you like a game where you can just mash the end button to swear and, and lower your stress levels, then I think there's just something charming and special about this game. I love weird games like this. You know, maybe I won't play it every day and I'm not going to pour 30 hours a week into it, but to pick it up and spend a weekend with it and see how far you can get on one run, I don't know. To me, it's like it's worth every penny just because I know I'll keep coming back to it years from now. I'll pull this game out and show people be like, hey, you were playing my summer car. Come check this game out real quick. So anywho, I've got some uh, I've got a rally car to build myself here. So Satan again. Uh, you know, what can I say? Just Satan again, and I will see you in the next one.